Hey there guys, what's up? Paladin here once again with another YouTube video for you all today. And yeah, there's no 2K16 gameplay in the background because I just don't feel like playing the game anymore and you probably won't see any more gameplay of anything wrestling related in, t in any of these prediction and review videos until 2K16 comes out. Because I really don't like what they did with 2K15, uh, they removed a lot of features, and I just don't really care for the game that much. I do like the gameplay, but it, there's just, there's so many things that are gone now that I just really don't want to play it anymore. Plus, one of my friends made me not really want to play the game anymore, because he always asked to play it. And it was really annoying after a while. But anyways, um, I yeah, you guys are probably okay with seeing a still image, because in my mind, if I just have a still image here and nothing, like for you to watch, you're probably just going to multitask and listen to me while doing something else on your computer and or phone. Uh, at least if you have one of those phones that allows you to open multiple apps at once. Um, I have one of those, but anyways. <laughs> um, besides the point, finally going to get on with the 2015 SummerSlam prediction video. There's a lot of matches on here, and yeah, it's this video might be a little lengthy. I apologize if it is, and you know... Yeah, that's basically how this is going to go. It's just, it's probably going to be a long video. Uh, if it's not, though, I, I am going to try to not make it a long video. But my rambling is clearly not helping right now, so I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So, first up, we've got the pre-show. We've got the primetime players who are the champions versus the New Day versus the Lucha Dragons versus Los Matadores. <laughs> and it is a fatal four-way match for the WWE Tag Team Championship. And I'm a little confused here, because when they do these triple threat and fatal four-way tag team sort of things, they never really announce if it's an elimination or if it's, like, you know, just a regular one where, like, if you got pinned and you're not even the champion, you can still win and be the champ. I don't, I don't, I don't know. A anyways, um, as for the length, uh, it is, I don't know if this is extended or not, or not by the way, guys. Um, I'm not sure if this pay-per-view is kind of like WrestleMania where they extend it and they make it lengthier. Because this is a really big match card. And if it's not extended, then, yeah, some of these matches are going to be really goddamn short. And that's going to really suck. But anyways, so, yeah, we've got this match going on for the pre-show. I think it's going to last for about maybe 15 minutes, roughly, somewhere around there. And uh, I definitely want the primetime players to retain. I think that they should have had the titles a long time ago, and they should definitely keep them for uh, quite a long time. If someone, I hope that you guys did not hear that, uh, um, if somebody were to win uh, this, you know, match other than the primetime players, I would definitely like the, uh, let's see here, the Lucha Dragons, yeah, the Lucha Dragons to win because they're coming from NXT. Well, at least one of them is. <laughs> um, the other one has been on WWE for, like, a really long time. Um, but I would like the Lucha Dragons to win because it'd be very interesting, and plus you got to push the new talent, so why not? So, yeah, uh, that's that's the pre-show. Um, as for the sort of, you know, next match that's going on here, because there's quite a few of them, uh, the next match is Ryback, the champion, the Intercontinental Championship, you know, which is cursed. He's the champion, anyways. Versus Big Show versus The Miz. Um, I really don't see Big Show winning this. He doesn't really need to win this. He should just quit. Can he please just quit? I'm sorry, The Big Show is one of the most unentertaining pieces of... Never mind. <laughs> He's just one of the most unentertaining wrestlers I've ever seen in a very long time. And all he does is interrupt things just like Kane does. But anyways, um, at least as of recent. Um, and when I'm talking about as of recent, I mean Kane. I don't mean Big Show. Big Show's been doing it a lot longer than Kane has. And he also doesn't know if he wants to be a face or a heel. Um, so yeah, moving on. We have uh, The Miz, who I don't think is going to win this either. He hasn't had a championship in a really long time. I just don't see him winning. Uh, he's got the sort of awkward movie star gimmick that he's got going on still that I don't really care for. So yeah, there's, there's that. I just want Ryback to, uh, you know, go ahead and win this. So... Yeah, um, he's been out for a while. He should wrestle with the championship more. Um, and personally, I think Ryback uh, has been improving a lot. So I don't, I don't really see why he should just suddenly get rid of you know his title for whatever you know reason. But anyways, so next up we have Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper versus Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Something a little bit to talk about here is that everybody seems to think that uh, Dean Ambrose is going to turn on Roman Reigns in this tag team match. I don't think that that's going to happen. It might, um, but there's a very slim chance that it's going to happen to me. I, I don't think 
uh, that they would do that. I think it's going to be a standard tag team match, and I want Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns to win in this match that I believe is probably going to be probably... I said probably twice. That was really redundant. Anyways, it's most likely going to be... Mm, I'd say 15 minutes. A lot of these matches I actually think will probably go on for roughly 15 minutes because uh, you got to have somewhat of a standard time going on here with all these matches. You know, you can't have one be super lengthy or whatever and take up a lot of time, honestly, which kind of sucks because the two matches that should take up a lot of time, actually there's three that should take up a lot of time on here, um, are Kevin Owens, Cesaro, uh, Brock and uh, Taker, and Cena and Seth. But anyways, moving on. So... Uh, next up, Stephen Amell, <laughs> the guy that plays as, you know, the Green Arrow. Is it, is it just Arrow or is it Green Arrow? I can't remember. He's not a superhero that I really pay attention to. Um, but it's Stephen Amell uh, and Neville, a.k.a. Andrew and Neville. You guys know how I feel about that stupid name. <laughs> um, versus Stardust and King Barrett. A very odd tag team. I don't know how this happened. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing, I guess. A very awkward tag team. Uh, but, yeah, so it is a tag team match. I think Stephen Amell, uh, or Stephen Amell, however you pronounce it, because sometimes it's different. Um, Stephen Amell, though, and Neville will most likely win the match. Um, and again, it'll probably be like 15 minutes long if I haven't said that. But moving on, we have Kevin Owens versus Cesaro, which totally should go on for like 20 minutes or even longer, because it's going to be the greatest match probably of the night, other than maybe John Cena versus Seth Rollins, but probably not. Um, because Kevin Owens and Cesaro. Okay, here's the thing. Cesaro definitely deserves a really, really big push. But I want Kevin Owens to win more because Kevin Owens, like, I feel like he got cheated out of the U.S. title. I already made a video about it. I already made the rant video about why WWE apparently decided to not keep him in the main event pitcher and make him lose uh, to John Cena a second time in a goddamn row after beating him clean the first time, which I thought was amazing. I marked out to that. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I think that, uh, you know, Kevin Owens should get some redemption here. Get, let him win a, another freaking pay-per-view is basically what I'm trying to get at here because they're both great talent. Either way, whoever wins, it's going to be a great match, but I would prefer Kevin Owens to win because what they're doing to him is horrible. Um, anyways, so next up we've got Team Vela versus Team Bad. Don't know what that stands for anymore because I honestly could care less, um, which is Naomi, Sasha Banks, and Tamina versus... Oh, God, this is even worse. Um, Team PCB, which is Paige, Charlotte, and Becky Lynch in a three-team elimination match. So, this, okay, so they announced that this one's an elimination match, so maybe, I don't know, sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. I, I don't know, whatever. So, um, first of all, can I have a little rant here? Uh, so I don't know if WWE seems to have thought that we as fans are very stupid and forgotten. I guess that's what they think. Um, actually, no, that's probably what they think. They probably think all the fans are morons and think that they can get away with fucking everything. Um, we proved them wrong, though, with Daniel Bryan because, you know, we he should have been champion a long time ago during that era. Or not even really era, during that time, which was about two years ago. But anyways, um, moving on. About, what is it, two years ago, one year ago? I can't remember, actually, off the top of my head, surprisingly, even though it was a really big moment. But uh, is it just me, or does WWE seem to think that the fans are stupid and not realize that Nikki Bella's had the title and has been uncontested, like, two pay-per-views in a row, probably three, actually. I can't remember off the top of my head. But about two pay-per-views in a row without anyone, like, doing anything about it. Like, no one's challenged her directly for the title. I think that that's... Stupid, I'm assuming they're trying to, like, make it so she beats Paige's, or not Paige's, uh, AJ's record because she left with CM Punk, which, by the way, they treated AJ, like, basically, like, shit when CM Punk left. Um, and I think that that was a stupid reason to treat her like crap just because her husband gave you guys a hard time before she left. Anyways, it's whatever. Um... I, I, it's just, it's stupid. I really hope that they're not trying to do that and have her beat AJ's, you, you, know, you know, this is basically all filler for up to the point where she beats, you know, AJ's streak, and then after that, you know, somebody else just finally fucking beats her randomly the next pay-per-view. Uh, it's it's kind of stupid. Um, as for how long this match is probably going to be, seeing how as Vince treats the WWE Divas and isn't at all like Triple H whatsoever when it comes to managing Divas like in NXT... Um, it's probably going to be like 10 minutes, somewhere around there. Probably like that, some somewhere around 10 minutes. Probably less, knowing Vince, because he doesn't know how to manage, you know, divas. 
female wrestlers at all. Um, but moving on. So next up, we've got Dolph Ziggler with Lana versus Rusev with Summer Rae, which is basically another Lana, um, in a singles match. I don't think this match would have actually happened if Ziggler hadn't recovered. Um, but I do believe that Ziggler should also win this match, and I believe it's probably also going to be like 10 minutes long. Um, probably even a little bit shorter than that. Um, I think Ziggler should win. I don't. Rusev's no longer on his constant winning streak, so he can lose a couple matches now. And Ziggler just needs a push in general, like Cesaro, because ever since he got the World Heavyweight Championship, like, what was it? Oh, God, that was like three, four years ago. They, he got a concussion, was gone for a month, and then they treated him like crap. He lost the title, didn't win him back in his match that he had afterwards with, uh, what was it? Um, oh, God, I forgot his name already. Alberto Del Rio, there we go. Um, he didn't win it back. He just ha he had a great match with him when he was supposed to retain, but he... I'm sorry, get back the title um, from Del Rio, but it just, he didn't win it, and it was stupid. Anyways, so yeah, uh, Ziggler hasn't really kept a really good title reign since then, so yeah. Uh, I do think that Ziggler, though, should get a push. He should already have been WWE World Heavyweight Champion probably like three times by now, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> maybe not three times, but at least once. Um, next up, though, got the, probably one of the biggest matches, if not the big match of the night, the biggest match of the night anyways. Um, Brock Lesnar with Paul Heyman versus The Undertaker. Uh, this match can kind of go in a certain way that I want it to, um, or it can go in a way that's utterly pointless. So, here's the thing, uh, or at least somewhat enjoyable. There's a third one, I guess, there, the, the enjoyable part. Um, I don't know why, uh, I don't know who's the heel in this goddamn match, um, but yeah, it, it seems like they're trying to make Undertaker a heel, um, against Brock Lesnar, but it doesn't make sense, because people are probably going to cheer for him during SummerSlam regardless, because during Brock Lesnar at last Raw being in his hometown, they made Undertaker kick Brock Lesnar in the fucking balls again, for whatever reason that was supposed to be. Um, I guess Undertaker's super weak, I guess, and old, and he needs to freaking hit people in the balls to be able to win a match now, I guess. But anyways, um, I guess they're trying to make this Undertaker kind of like a heel. I think it's kind of stupid. So does he need to be a heel to beat Brock Lesnar? I don't fucking know. Um, but yeah, I think that here, here's how this is going to go. Undertaker's going to flat out win. Brock Lesnar could just straightforward flat out win, obviously. Or... Undertaker could lose against, obviously, Brock Lesnar again twice in a row after WrestleMania. Um, but I think the great idea, the the best idea that they could possibly have for this is if this sets up for Undertaker versus Sting. What they literally could do is have it so Undertaker loses this match via Sting interrupting and, like, getting Undertaker distracted or whatever and making him lose to Brock Lesnar and then setting it up for next year's WrestleMania the Icon versus the Phenom. I think that that would be a perfect idea. I am fine with Undertaker losing if that is the case. Otherwise, I kind of want Undertaker to win because I'm a fanboy. But anyways, you can call me whatever. Um, as for the match length, I definitely think this is one of those matches that's just going to go on for like 25 minutes or so. And, uh, you know, that's just my opinion. But moving on. Now we have another match that can kind of go some way either or. What the hell going on here? That kind of leads into the uh, the main event of this pay-per-view, actually. Randy Orton versus Sheamus. Um, there's, there's a couple of things that could happen here. Uh, number one is that Randy Orton wins and Sheamus does not cash in. Um, I don't think that Sheamus would cash in while he, when he loses a match and he's hurt and everything. Um, if he does, then whatever, but I'm totally wrong then. Either that happens, or then Sheamus uh, then, you know, goes ahead and wins this, and then possibly, most likely, will cash in. He might not cash in, but I'm pretty sure he would if he won the match. Um, that's how WWE would probably set things up. Um, as for the match length, I think this is also probably another one of those 15-minute matches. Um, but I definitely think that that's probably how it's going to go. I do, as for who I want to win the match, I just want Randy to win the match. Um, Sheamus's character as of late hasn't been my most favorite. I do really like Sheamus a lot, but I don't know if I like this heel that he has, where he, where he seems like a brawler, he seems like a badass, but then at other times he seems kind of like a bitch. So, uh, I'm not sure how the WWE's trying to handle this, uh, you know, heel run that Sheamus has, but it's just kind of iffy to me. Um, 
But anyways, next up, last match of the night. Most likely the last match of the night. We've got the United States Champion, John Cena, versus WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Seth Rollins. A singles match for both the titles, actually. Um, I did not know about this. This seems like a last-minute thing. Maybe I didn't hear about it. Maybe I just didn't watch the Raw right before um, SummerSlam. I could have sworn I did, but maybe I didn't. And so, yeah, I'm I'm a little, definitely a little surprised by this that it's both titles, um, which kind of actually makes it even more questionable. If Sheamus cashes in, does he get both? Because I know it's a contract for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, but if they're both down, why not just take the United States too? Because plus, that's what the match is for, anyways. So I don't know. That's a very big question on my mind right now. But um, yeah. So uh, I want Seth Rollins to win this badly. But if Seth Rollins wins it, then someone's gotta interrupt and not beat John Cena cleanly like Kevin Owens or Daniel Bryan did. And you know, more importantly, Kevin Owens, because I still think that that was stupid and he should have become the U.S. champion. But anyways, um, so yeah, so. I'm being a little redundant here. I said so, yeah, twice. I apologize for that. But, you know, it's just... If John Cena wins this, he really does not need to beat Ric Flair's record. He does not... I know he's still in his 30s, so he probably will at some point, which is going to bother the ever-living hell out of me because WWE just... They, they don't know what to do with that belt. They, they either give it to John Cena or they give it to a guy like Daniel Bryan because the fans just had to beat some sense into you to give it to him but anyways so yeah um john cena's probably gonna win this and if he does i'm gonna be heavily upset because he shouldn't there's there's no reason for him to he does not need the 16th uh title reign or run uh, that, that he's inevitably uh inevitable how do you pronounce oh, wow my word pronunciation is terrible that he, that's inevitable that he's you know eventually gonna get but, um, most likely, anyways. Uh, high probability. <laughs> but, uh, I, I definitely think Seth should win this. If he does, like I said, if he does win, he's probably gonna get somebody's help, which sucks a lot. I don't understand why they can't just have Seth win a clean match for once, because, honestly, I like Seth Rollins as a wrestler a lot, but I don't like what they're doing, again, with his character. He's, he's a cowardly heel, always hides behind people, even though he's a great wrestler in the ring, and for the most part, it seems like he can get the job done by himself. So it's it's really stupid, really iffy. It's just really bland. I don't like it. Um, that that he keeps having to have this type of heel personality. Um, but overall, I, I definitely think Seth should win this, even if it is with um, somebody's unfortunate, most likely help. <laughs> um, I just don't want Cena to win. Cena has literally I'm going to be repeating this a lot but Cena literally has no right at the moment at least to win 16 you know be 16 time champion already uh especially with the US title on top of that he's just going to give Cena every fucking belt after that I guess I love the pictures of John Cena where he's got every belt in the business on him cuz that if Vince could do that he would he'd, even the divas he'd throw the divas on John Cena if he could <sighs> Anyways, guys, that's that's my uh, sort of um, prediction video. If you found it enjoyable, then be sure to leave a like and stuff and comment down below. Tell me your opinion, uh, opinions on the video and my, uh, opinions on my predictions. If you agree or disagree, you know, whatever. Um, leave them down in the comment section below. It'll be interesting to hear. And, yeah, uh, sorry that this video got kind of ranty, but that's just me expressing my opinions because WWE's been kind of fucking up lately. But, moving on. That's all I got to say. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later. Peace.